Hmm. Okay. There we go. <coughs> So today we are going to talk about, uh, um, uh, we're going to first start with uh, default argument values, um, uh, default value for arguments actually, and dynamic memory allocation. For that, I think uh, it would be a good idea to bring uh, what we talked about last time up. So we actually wrote some code that um, explained about uh, function overloading and we, we created a line and it went uh, we put different types of uh, um, values that we want uh, uh, different types of overloading that we wanted functions with different uh, uh, signature and therefore we we understood that we can have several different functions with the same name uh, we are okay about that um, I, oh, I forgot to ask the magical question. Any questions before before we begin? I forgot to ask about that. Any questions before we begin? All right, and the rest are sleeping, I presume. Nobody's answering. Uh, oh, actually, they did. Good, good. Okay. So, <clears throat> now, um, so... Essentially, we said that when we are running a function, uh, we are running a, uh, the overloaded functions. What we do is uh, 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 what what C plus plus does. It takes a look at the types. It says line character integer. Therefore, it jumps to line character integer and runs that one. And then it comes down. The next one is line character. So it goes picks up the line character one and line no argument, line no argument and then line integer and it goes to line integer and therefore everything's happening very nicely. Um, uh, well, we are okay with this, correct? Are we okay with this? All right, <clears throat> so what we want to talk about right now is default value for the arguments. So C++ has this capability of, uh, uh, of uh, letting it replace the value of the arguments if they are not provided. Right now in here we are saying <coughs> if uh, uh, essentially in our uh, implementation of line over here we are saying if line with one argument is provided I want 75 to be passed to length. Are we okay with this? We can actually mention this in another syntax. So instead of actually implementing a new function for, and overloading it, we could actually put a default value for the argument that I would say, uh, first of all, let me bring these down because this is important for us to know where those things are going to reside. And, and I'm going to just uh, make sure that these are only prototypes at the type, top. So prototype, prototype, and prototype. <clears throat> so if uh, user doesn't specify any, va uh, if user specifies, uh, doesn't specify the length, I want 75 to be passed. So instead of writing this function, I will remove the single line, uh, the, the single argument function, and instead I would say set to 75. This essentially tells to the compiler, so in here, uh, uh, line character fill is no longer needed and this only can be done if uh, the difference of the logic of the single argument and two argument is really just the default value for that variable if that's the case when the first time the function is called over here it's integer and a uh, character and integer obviously 45 is going to go to length because 45 is provided length will be 45 and it runs and draws 45 characters but in the second one when it's not provided it still goes there to argument constructor but the default value 75 will be provided for it instead therefore when it comes over here length will have the value of 75 and what we're going to see printed will be actually 75 characters. Are we okay with this? Uh, so, okay, I have a question about that. Of course you can. So, like in the line 9, when you call the 45 as the second parameter, mm -hmm. 
the the tape is like character inch, but for the line ten, is that still like character inch or it just like character? It is line character int because int has a default value. Okay. So when you only put the first one, if the first character is matched, compiler is gonna take a look at the prototype and see if there is any value provided for the second one. Okay. So you yes. are saying line care. So compiler starts, it says line care. Let me see if this one has a default value. If it does, then it calls it. If it doesn't, then we're in trouble. We don't have any implementation for that. Now, if I try to run this, it's going to give me an error. Oh, not like that. If I run this now, it's going to give me an error and telling me, hey, uh, you don't. What happened over here? How is it running? What the devil just happened? Oh, it actually, I think it actually calls this one instead. <laughs> yeah, this is the one of the parts that is crazy about this. So if I actually, if I don't put anything over here, compiler tries to find the best match. So just take a look. So now in here, I have two arguments. So it goes to the two argument. Beautiful. Okay. And I have one argument over here. So compiler says, line character line character is it a match no so what is the closest match over here there is a single one with an integer and because ascii code of a character is actually an integer it's going to call that one instead so it's going to jump to the one that has single and length becomes the ascii code of the star and therefore as you see what's going to get printed the one that we said asterisk is going to actually print dashes to the number of the ASCII code of asterisk, which is 42. Do we understand that? So again, very tricky thing it is. You have to really be careful with your design. You can't just do it just like that, okay? So now in this case, I'm going to remove that integer thingy over here because that's going to be crazy design. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to remove that integer thingy over there so I can actually teach the default arguments. Okay, and now line 50 is not going to work out, obviously. Oh, and if I put line 50 now over here and I put the default argument over here as 75, then now it actually will run. So the first one is going to run. Oh. Uh, until the function finishes execute. Oh, sorry. Stop. Okay. So there you go. So now it's going to actually run the first one. Okay. Let me stop it. It hung. There we go. One more time. It's going to run the first one. Come on. All right. It's going to run the first one, as you see. Let me just put it side by side. That's better. So it's going to run the first one. And when the second one is called, it still goes to the first one because the second one has a default argument, the second argument. That's going to be 75. So it's going to print 75 of them. Then it goes back up. Now it's sync with no argument. We have an implementation for it. So it comes down over here. Um, and prints uh, dashes first. And for the, the other one that is 50, it's going to print twos all over the place because 50 is the ASCII code of two. And because it's a single integer, it's actually going to call it with uh, a single integer. So uh, again, got to be careful. This is not line int now. It's going to be actually line care because line it doesn't exist. Okay. So that's why I'm going to remove that one too. So the next thing we can do is to actually say, okay, I do not need this one either. So the only difference between no argument and a character is that this one is has a dash and that's it. So I can actually remove that one too and remove this one too. And I say if the fill so or uh, do something like this. So I'm going to say no longer needed. It's no longer needed. And instead, for this fill, I'm going to put a single dash. So now what happens is that if there is nothing provided, it's dash and 75. If uh, the first one is provided, it's going to overwrite the default value, becomes an asterisk. And if they're both called, they're both uh, set up, and the outcome is going to be as follows. Are we okay with this?
all right and that was ladies and gentlemen the default value for arguments that you can use if you don't want to overload there is no if there is no need for the for overloading you can actually use that one instead and it becomes very helpful actually okay so and let's bring this down all right so let's put this one default uh, a default value for arguments dot cpp okay they, they also call this defaulted arguments you can call that one too okay now um, now uh, we are going to talk about dynamic memory allocation so we, we we need to we want to understand exactly what dynamic memory allocation is and for that i'm just gonna uh, kind of remind you of uh, uh, of uh, what pointers and arrays were if you recall from ipc 144 if you recall from ipc 144 at the review that we had over there we said when we are designing a single variable a single variable occupies a space in memory for the size that it has but when you are creating and then uh, if you have an address up there, and if you uh, put an integer pointer you can actually point to it and, and you get to it and we know all those stuff and you say target of PTR 2345 is going to go to it we know all this this is pointers and an integer um, so that's essentially what we know uh, uh, about uh, uh, let me just see if I if I yeah so and it's the same thing uh, with uh, um, uh, it's the same thing with doubles and, uh, and single variables but when you define an integer array for example what happens is that essentially five integers back to back in memory are going to sit in a memory and then after that a, 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 a pointer is gonna be uh, and when you say a3 is two three four five it puts the values in it we know that but then the, what happens in reality is that it's not only four five integers in memory but actually it creates pointer a pointer a constant integer pointer somewhere in memory and it holds the value the address of the beginning of those five integers in there so essentially writing integer ar5 is like ordering a combo in McDonald's yeah I want combo number one uh, hamburger comes with a with fries and coke it puts everything together and gives you a combo and that's essentially what you see in here just a second I want to bring something up in here hmm. um, just a second my apologies there we go oh let's continue so yeah so uh we're good with that there's uh, are we okay down to here we understand when you the when you create an array what actually happens do we understand that okay let me close the door since my dog is going crazy hold on for a second my apologies just a second All right, back to business. Okay, so yeah, so that's what it is. So essentially, and uh, so if I actually create an array like this, I literally can write something like target of AR is two, three, four, five. And if I do that, it essentially goes to the target of AR and puts the two, three, four, five in the first one. And if I say AR two is four, 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 obviously it's gonna go to the second one and put it over there. Or I can say from address of AR go to integers further and put the value over there so if i do it like this essentially that 444 will be overwritten by 555 and this is essentially how arrays are placed in memory so um are we okay with this do we understand what what it what what how arrays are actually placed in memory 
All right, now that we know that the arrays are placed in memory, when we actually do dynamic memory allocation, we need to realize that these arrays are actually all within the executable program that you have. So when you compile your program and you write int A5, the whole thing, the pointer, the five arrays, and everything is within the executable program of yours. So if I have integer A5 and the size of executable is 10, it's just a figure. If the size of the executable is 1,000 and I have integer A5, if you make that integer A10, then five integers will be added, which means 20 bytes will be added. Therefore, the size of the executable becomes 1,020 bytes. So when you create what we call a statically allocated array or any type of regular variable that you put is actually in a statistically allocated memory. If you put that one in the executable pro if you if you cr create that one it's going to be within the executable program we don't want to do that why because not always we know how many things we want like if you're asking a you like you want to find the i don't know the uh you if you want to get series of integers and print them all in a sorted manner you have to collect them all and then sort them and print them if you want to do something like that then uh, you have to know how many integers you have and to do that you say okay it cannot be more than 100 then you create an array of four, uh, uh, 100 integers inside your executable then you ask the user to enter one by one and you go up to 50 so you put 50 integers into the 100 integers that you allocated and essentially you waste 50 integers of memory this is good when you have 100 integers, but what if it's 5 million integers? Like that, you cannot actually put the whole thing inside your executable. For that, we have a mechanism with which we can actually have the pointer only inside our executable and have the array created outside of the executable in the memory of our computer. So essentially, what you you the the array is not going to be inside your executable anymore and the 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 bot the, the head of the array where you actually want to access the array it's going to be inside the executable and the rest will be outside of the executable and all these things happen at runtime not compile time the top one over here everything is happening at compile time as soon as you compile your program it converts your code to uh, machine language it places that array inside your executable saves it on a hard drive and when you execute it it gets loaded to ram but when you are doing in a second part over here what you have in your program is only a pointer and when program is running when the executable comes into the memory and runs at runtime it asks the operating system can i have five integers operating system cre occupies five integers in the available RAM and passes its address so you can put it in your pointer and this is the syntax oops this was the syntax for it this is the syntax where you are essentially saying integer pointer a is set to new int 5 by saying something like this you essentially ask the operating system to give you five new integers and the app and place its address in a pointer called a. Do we understand this syntax? And you can use this exactly like you're using a regular uh, uh, array. It does not make any difference. It is identical to a regular array and, and it makes absolutely no difference. You can use it exactly um, how you have uh, used uh, your arrays before. All right. That's that one. Uh, what is the next thing we need to go? So that's uh, uh, so. Let's actually uh, kind of uh, put that syntax uh, under microscope and see how it's done. And then afterwards, we're going to start writing some code. Okay. So how do we actually uh, create all these things, and how do we code it? This is how we code it. So essentially, any type that you want an array of. You want an array of cars, you want an array of integers, you want an array of characters, you want an array of employees, array of students, it doesn't matter. You create a pointer of that type. So you say type, pointer, student, pointer, integer, pointer, double pointer, and then you create a data pointer. It's nice to set it to null. 
as a rookie, always keep unused pointers with null. That's what we call a safe state of a pointer. Do it that way, okay? And make sure you are not using that because if you use a pointer that is null before you do allocation and you try to put stuff in it before your dynamic memory allocation, obviously you get a segmentation fault, which is not good. When you just, uh, and if you don't put null in it, obviously it's gonna point to some garbage place in memory that you have no access to. But to allocate memory using new, you actually write data PTR. The pointer you created is set to new type. So exactly the type you created the top the pointer with, you say new that one, new student, new integer, new double, new car, new employee. And then in square bracket, you put the size of the dynamic array that you want. And it will give you that array in the memory if successful, if you have enough memory. If you don't have memory data PTR, will have null in it, okay, null pointer in it. So, and always try to stay within the range of your array, like any array that you use. If you go out of, the, out of your array, like you do in your program, uh, operating system is going to stop you. Sometimes when you have your executable inside, your uh, array inside your executable, and if you go one character out, uh, one integer out, sometimes you just damage the neighboring variables and it's not going to uh, give you any warnings, the operating system, because it is your memory. You are in, within your own executable. Uh, but with uh, dynamic memory allocation, no joke. You go one character out, it, uh, operating system catches you immediately. And Linux operating system is much more precise with that. Or well, Windows operating system is very forgiving. It runs it and it has lots of leaks so anyways so that's that and if you have the data size in this case is seven remember the allocation that you are doing the size that you are saying that size is the first invalid index to go to if i get seven integers or seven whatever type it is then index seven is the first invalid index for that how, how do I explain this? How many fingers do I have? I have five fingers. Zero, one, two, three, four. So when you have five fingers, the index starts from zero, goes up to four to call, count all the five. And that's how we got to make sure that we are not going through it. And because the dynamic memory allocation is happening by you, you are responsible to take that memory back to uh, the operating system. Because you are doing the new, you have to do the delete so the operating system releases that memory and gives it back to the system. If you don't do that, that memory remains occupied until your computer is reset. Remember that. So it means if you forget to... Uh, uh, free the memory that you allocated if your program keeps executing over and over and over after a while your computer is going to run out of memory and it's going to hang and you have faced this many many times whenever you have some problem with your internet connection and you call a service pro service provider what do they tell you they tell you unplug the modem wait for 15 seconds plug it back in why do they say that because their uh, firmware has memory leak as it's assigning I don't know Wi-Fi connections and it's doing all the routings uh, memory leaks are happening over and over and over and over until the memory of your modem is or uh, whatever now like your Wi-Fi access point whatever the memory is uh, get full it hangs it cannot route anymore you lose internet connection you they take it out and put it back in and that happened to everyone how do we delete uh, the memory that we requested, it's using the delete command. So you essentially say delete data PTR. And remember, it deletes the target, not the data PTR. Data PTR is a pointer, is a variable inside your executable. You don't delete it. The variable inside your executable goes away when your executable goes away. What you want to delete is the target of that 
pointer. Therefore, when you say delete data PTR, you're saying delete where the data DTR is pointing to, and that's going to be the place, uh, the thing that you have. And again, remember, uh, you need to put the square brackets after delete because you used the square bracket to do dynamic memory allocation. So when you use square brackets for dynamic memory allocation, your delete must have uh, a square bracket too. Now, it's the exact same thing when you are actually doing a single thing. So if you want only one thing to create, one dynamic memory allocation, one employee, sometimes your class is huge, you, but you don't want to have it in your executable. You have a class that has 5 million data members, uh, an array in it and stuff like that. You don't want to have that in an executable. One single thing, you want to have it outside of your executable in the heap. How to do that? <clears throat> you simply say data PTR is equal to new type, new student, new integer, new double, new car, new employee. No array, just a single one. And with that, you're going to have only one entity created and a pointer pointing to it. Obviously, when you are deleting it, you don't put the square brackets over there because it's a single entity. And that's the most important thing to remember. Single entities with delete, arrays with square bracket, and that's in a nutshell, the syntax of dynamic memory allocation. Are we okay with that? Perfect. So now that we know the syntax of dynamic memory allocation, let's actually see what are the uses for this thing. Now, why do we actually, and why and how we actually use dynamic memory allocation, and what is it good for? So, the syntax of dynamic mem memory allocation is essentially as follows. So if I actually want to do it, uh, um, let me just uh, give you the syntax for the quick syntax. Where did I put it? It's right here. There you go. So say you want to have, you have a single employee and you want to allocate memory for it. So this is my struct employee. Uh, <laughs> this is my struct employee. This is my struct employee. It has some values in it and it has an image that is, uh, I don't know, 50 million characters size, whatever. Is it 50 million? 50 million, yeah. And I, and I don't want to have this in my uh, executable. So what do I do? I go employee pointer EPTR. That's my pointer. Then I'm going to say EPTR is set to new employee. If I get null in here, it means I... It, if I do not get null in here, then I'm going to do my business with, with employees. So here goes, here goes the logic logic using the employee employee and do the business with employee whatever it is and at the end I delete it if this is not successful the EPTR will be null and if EPTR is null then I'm going to actually mention I am out of memory so you can actually mention how it uh, deals with it. So that's um, allocating a single entity with dynamic memory allocation. Are we okay with this syntax? All right. Okay, so let me just... Okay, next thing, what do we use, what, what we want to use dynamic memory allocation for? <clears throat> Let's say um, I have uh a very simple thing i want to let's 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 do a very simple uh uh problem let's say for some reason my client is asking to uh get several uh integers from console then print them in reverse order very simple thing. This program, this small little thing, is impossible to write. It is impossible to write this thing 
with our knowledge of C or C++ down to this point without dynamic memory allocation. You can't do that. The very first question that you're going to ask is, how many integers? And the client says, I don't know. Then you say, what is the maximum? Okay, if you don't know, can you tell me maximum how many? And the employee and the client says, I don't know. It could be five. It could be five billion. I do not know. Because of that fact that you don't know how many integers are going to be before <clears throat> the program gets executed, <clears throat> puts, puts the whole, uh, makes the whole uh, writing statically allocated memory out of the window. You can't do that. So to do that, I have to actually ask the user yeah, at yeah, runtime, how many integers do they have? So every single time they are having, they're going to look at the list. They're going to give me how many integers are there. So how do I do it? This is how it happens. So the very first thing I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say, uh, I need to know how many integers do I have so that's the count of integers that I have then obviously I need to have uh, a pointer to keep the array dynamic array of integers into and we said we set it to null PTR <clears throat> then we're gonna tell to the uh, client to the user how many integers do you have so see out enter the number of integer values now <clears throat> the user is going to tell it to me. So I'm going to say CN, CNT. Now I know how many integers are coming in. Now I'm going to ask the operating system to give me that much integers. I know it's CNT int, so I'm going to say operating system. So now I'm going to ask OS to give me CNT integers and keep the address in val. So I simply say uh, uh, val is set to uh, val is set to new integer c and t. So as of this moment, I may have number of uh, integers coming in. I don't know. How do I know? I'm going to say if val is equal to null ptr if the value is a null pointer then i'm out of memory see out uh, out of memory it means i could not allocate that many integers okay other than that now i can actually do my business now i'm going to say now i know i have that many i'm going to say integer i for i set to zero i less than c and t and I plus plus. I'm going to actually show row numbers so uh, so they, they know how to enter the enter. So I'm going to say C out, enter values, enter values. And I'm going to show a prompt with a row number. So I'm going to say C out. I'm going to show a, a, a row number I plus one. And I'm going to show um, a prompt. So they can enter it. Now I'm going to say C in. Now I'm going to get them one by one and put it in, an, in the integer, va, integer array. So I'm going to say C in into uh, val i. So I use val. Now I may use val as an integer array. Okay, so now I can actually use it one by one. I'll put it in there. It's going to get all the integer values. And after that, I'm going to revert, show them all in reverse order. So I simply say um, for uh, um, now let's make it easy. Uh, C and T minus one and C and T greater than or equal to zero. And C and uh, and sorry, and I greater than or equal to zero, and I minus minus. I'm gonna display the uh, integers in a reverse order. So I'm gonna go C out val I. Uh, let's put a space over here, and I'm gonna say C out and L. 
and my program is done. Do you think this program is okay or I made a boo-boo? So, is this program okay? No. Why, Armando? Because you haven't uh, deallocated the memory. Yes, I just had memory leak. That's one of the most common mistakes, memory leak. Now, the memory leak, thank you very much for all the no's. I'm happy to hear that. Not no's, no S, okay? So, what happens is that... Uh, so uh, where the, the allocation is successful, that's where I'm going to delete. You can actually put the delete over here too. Delete val. You can do it over here. It doesn't matter if it's successful or not because so we can put it here. Put it here since deleting a null PTR has no effect. Okay, we could put the VAT over here because if it's here, if it's out of memory and it's null, we delete it inside the delete command. There is this if statement. If the pointer is not null, it deletes it. If it's null, it, it's not going to do anything. But logic dictates to put the delete where you actually have memory. So in here, I actually have the memory. I know it's going to actually delete, so I, I put it over there. So we could put it over here. Let's say over let's say could put it here since deleting a null pointer has no effect, but it's better to but it is better to put it where you are sure you have memory allocated. So if you are not sure always put it over here if there is if the logic gets too complicated and you have no idea if it's deleted or not put it at the end to make sure that it's deleted and now if i run the program it's going to ask me how many integers do i have i'm going to say three then it's going to show me the thing and shows it in reverse order now if i put over here 10 now it's going to actually have 10 integers and show the 10 integers in reverse. So no matter how many integers I put over here, it is going to accept and go exactly to that amount. Let's walk through it step by step and see how it happens. So now if I run the program, it runs as follows. So <clears throat> CNT has garbage in it. Null PTR is null. Val is null, as you see gets the value. I'm going to put over here 3. I enter it. So it's going to say val that is 0 is set to new int 3, which means <clears throat> 3 integers will be allocated and address goes to val. As soon as I run that, you'll see that val is no longer null. It is actually pointing to someplace. <clears throat> because it's not null, it comes over here and it says enter the values and one by one puts the values inside the the array as it goes through it. Um, so it goes through it one by one, 10, 20, and 30, and I hit enter. Now it starts from the end of obviously CNT minus one, that is two. Uh, so it starts from two and goes down to zero and prints them in reverse order one by one. And right back over here, as you see, it says val is pointing to 10. Why does it say that? Because the first element of the array is 10. And C has no way to know if this val is pointing to a single entity or pointing to a million. That's why you actually have to put the pr uh, brackets over here. If you don't put the brackets over here, it only deletes the first one. So you have to put the bracket over there for everything to get deleted. And as soon as, so as you see over here, it says 10, but as soon as you delete it, the value is all garbage now. Unable to read memory. Why? Because the address we had in there, it's not valid anymore. It is always good practice. It is always to good practice as a rookie, as a novice, to set the value to null PTR after it's the allocation. So if you are using the pointer later, the pointer is null and you know it's not pointing to anywhere. So good practice to do that. Practice to do it as a rookie. 
and later on you learn that uh, not all, obviously at the end of the program who cares if it's null or not it's end or in a destruct um, oh sorry we don't know that yet yeah at the end of the program I don't need to delete it but if I'm halfway through the program and if I don't know if I'm reusing this pointer or not then you set it to null so you know it is empty are we okay down to here J. You said you're not okay. What's the question? You didn't set the proper microphone. At the beginning of the every big blue button pro thing, it says Do you hear the echo. If you say yes, it means you heard it. So you should be able to talk. You can always, yeah. You have to check the proper microphone, set the proper microphone. Do that echo test when you're coming in. Don't trust it. Make sure you hear yourself. Say a one, two, three. Make sure that you can actually hear yourself. Hello, hello. Okay, now I can hear you, Jake. Go ahead. Yeah, sir. If the operating system doesn't have the memory which uh, uh, which we want, then what will it return? Null. It will return null? Yeah, that's why I'm saying if val is null, PTR out of memory. <laughs> oh, that if okay. statement is giving your answer. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's try it. I, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I'll try it. I hope I don't crash my computer. Let me save everything. Save everything. I don't know what's going to happen. It's Windows, right? So I'm just going to say over here, when it comes over here and it says enter the number, I'm going to say, <laughs> let's see if it's going to actually, oh, that's the, so it is now trying to occupy 200 and, 14 actually you know what might happen no i'm not going to do that because if i ask for that much memory operating system start swapping on my hard drive to get the memory i'm not going to test this on my computer uh, i'm going to stop it sorry um i'm not going to test it's going to swap it on so it's going to dump the it's going to uh, have virtual memory on your hard drive and i don't want that to happen so uh it's better not to do that <laughs> Okay, okay, so but in general, it will return. Uh, it's re it will return null, yeah. So if okay. it cannot do it, it will return null. So especially when you are working on a on an advanced operating system like Linux, the administrator gives your user a quota of memory. It says, okay, you are allowed to use this much memory. Okay, oh. and, yeah. and when you uh, your size exceeds not that much, exceeds the free memory in your quota, it will return null. Later on in OP345, we'll find out that there is another way to detect that one too through exception handling that we don't deal with it now. It's going to be in OP345. Okay? Okay, yeah. All right. Okay, so thank you. Good question. Actually, uh, when I started at Seneca, I used to be a student at Seneca 30 years ago. So, um, and I did that on one of the machines. Uh, that we had and I crashed the machine <laughs> but, because I just wanted to see how much memory the machine has. I said I'm going to start uh, 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 in a loop. I started uh, uh, allocating memory until I get a null pointer and I got a null pointer and the system went down. <laughs> so uh, yeah, you can't do it now because uh, everything is set properly. At 30 years ago we had just this little machines that we worked on. So anyways so uh that's that so um any questions down to here so now that we know the syntax uh, and uh, of memory uh handling memory let's actually see uh what are the things that we have to be careful careful about when we do dynamic memory allocation okay so when you are actually doing dynamic memory allocation it is always important these are the boo-boos you may make. First of all, if you just create the pointer, don't use it. This is an unassigned a pointer that you have an unassigned, or if it's a null, you get segmentation fault. So as soon as you say segmentation fault, you know that you're out of your memory. Either the, te the pointer you have is not set to a proper amount of memory, or, uh, 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 or there is... Um, um, uh, you uh, or you exceeded the size of the memory. Uh, Perrin, you said yes when I said you have a question. It was, do you have a question, Perrin? Sorry, no. My no? mouse, I just slipped. 
Okay. The wrong bunch, okay. Sorry. My bad. Maybe I, I don't even remember what I asked. I just saw everybody says no and you said yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyways. Okay. So, so the next thing we need to know is to make sure that if we are having a null pointer, we don't use them. If you have a null pointer in your data pointer, then it's going to crash. It's, you're going to get null pointer assignment. That's the next thing to be careful about. Going out of range is another thing. So when you actually have a size, you have to make sure you never go more than size. As soon as you get out of that size, again, segmentation fault is the uh, is what we have. Um, are, uh, do, we, do we understand that this, down to this point? It's crashes. So if something like this happened, this is crash, your program stops and it crashes. Are we okay with this down to this point? So first of all, don't use unassigned uh, pointer, number two. Don't use null pointer, number three. When you have a pointer, keep track of the size. Make sure when you have dynamic memory, keep track of the size. Make sure you don't exceed the size, okay? And the next thing, when your pointer is pointing to something and you want to reuse the pointer, make sure you delete it first. If you don't delete the old one and set the pointer to a new one, everything seems to work properly but the problem is that the old thing that you have will get lost and it will be dyna memory leak you're not going to have access to it anymore so if you are reusing your pointer make sure you delete it it is an absolute must and if you and if you follow the rule of keeping unused pointers null then deleting a null pointer will not harm anyway. So before your dynamic memory allocation, you delete and then you allocate in case it is already pointing to something. So if the logic is complicated and you are reusing a pointer and you don't know if the pointer is pointing to something already or not, first delete it. Okay? Correct state of an unused pointer in dynamic memory allocation is always null and the data size set to zero. You always have a variable to keep track of your size unless somehow you know where is the end of data. So having the size of data as an extra variable when you're doing dynamic memory allocation is always handy. Okay? So correct state of dynamic memory allocation is always to 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 allocate the memory and stay within your size and then deallocate exactly how you have allocated and do not uh, use uh, 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 a delete that is not set properly. So if you miss the square brackets, then you're not going to be able to use it. So always set everything back to null after you're done. So when you are doing done with your dynamic memory and you don't need it anymore, after deleting it, set it to null. If you directly set it to null, that's going to be memory leak. So first delete, then set to null. And make sure that you delete the way you allocate it. If you delete an array only with one, uh, without square bracket, only the first one is going to get deleted and the rest will be uh, memory leak. We okay down to here? All right. Now, now, when reusing, always remember to take care of unfinished business and free the memory and then do DMA. Always. So, you this if statement is to do unfinished business. You don't need the if, if, the, the if statement to free the memory. When you free the memory, just delete the pointer. If it's not, nothing's going to happen. But if you have some unfinished business that you want to do with that thing, first do it and then free, free the memory and then do dynamic memory allocation. And then reuse the memory with uh, the size and uh, specs that you have always stay within the uh, range of the memory size and hopefully like that you're not going to have any memory leak. Are we okay down to this point? All right, so let's Simit Raj, are we good? Abdullah, are we good? You with me?
Sam it, Raj? Yes, sir. I'm here. Sorry, I... I... No, no, I, I got no, no, your I, yes. I got your yes. Yeah, uh, Symmetra yeah, is the one I'm, like, I'm worried about. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Um, sir, I have a quick question. Yes, go ahead. Parent. So will the, will that slide be available to us? It is the, already in your notes. notes. Oh yeah, oh, it is in, in the, your notes. Oh, it's uh, it is going to be repository, right? Yeah, exactly. It's going to okay. be where I put all the C plus plus codes. It's going to okay, be right beside you. it. All the slides hmm. are going to be there. Someone in the chat asked if we'll have a quiz at the end of the class. Uh, not today, because uh, uh, the dynamic memory allocator is pretty fresh for you. And we were supposed to have questions on that. So uh, I'm going to find a day, probably Friday or something, so everybody have time to go through it. And you have a workshop to do. So, uh, And the workshop, you're pretty late. Because we didn't finish the dynamic memory allocation last week, um, you don't have enough time so i'm going to give you a couple of days extra for the workshop too okay so you will see that your workshop after i'm done today you're gonna if you do dash do at the end of your workshop so when you actually sub if you just write something like when you write uh tilde far that dot sorry man do slash submit submit uh two four four uh w two p whatever Okay, if you put a dash do uh, after the class, an hour after the class, you will notice that uh, the due dates are postponed. Okay, so I'm going to make the due dates later. Uh, so you have time to actually do your workshop. We okay with that? All right. Professor, uh, is it uh, going to be only for this workshops or the rest of the workshops no only this workshop no, only this why there's the workshop uh, next week all right next next, week. next day next that week. you're coming in that is going to be tomorrow and the day after tomorrow uh, uh the the topic that we have is very small it's going to be finished in 45 minutes so we're going to be back in track <laughs> okay so that's that uh now let's see how we can actually expand this thing let's say um, the user is is not sure how many integers they have uh, i'm going to modularize this thing okay so uh, uh to see the due date always remember dash do precedes supersedes the, the, the description of the workshop so if in workshop it says do on Friday and do says Sunday, Sunday is the one that is right. Okay, not the the workshop. So dash do is your friend. Always call that one and see what happens. Okay. All right. Uh, and the next workshop is pretty simple too. You can do it in half a day. Um, so what else we need to do over here? So let's modularize this. And this one was... Uh, uh, uh abc uh dma uh, array dot cpp okay so this is how we deal with an array and um uh, now i'm going to modularize this which means i'm going to make this uh action of getting an integer a uh, 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 a procedure a separate thing that we can actually use it as a module so i'm going to create uh uh i'm going to create um uh, a module over here and I'm gonna call that uh, uh, let's call it uh, DMA int dot uh, H for the header file and the other one is going to be add new item DMA int dot CPP okay and we're gonna get the code for uh, uh, the thing that we had and we're gonna put it over here copy we're gonna paste it in here and we're gonna change this to a function and for that we know that we're gonna have include um, s d d s d m a int h oh not include what are you doing if not define if not defined this then def, uh, and if uh, 
and this one is going to change to define and we have namespace stds and we're going to have include actually at the bottom of io stream we're going to have include uh, dma int okay so what i want to do i want this function of mine over here i want this function of mine to allocate memory and return it to me so that's what i want i want this main over here i want it to allocate memory and return it to me so it's going to return an integer pointer to me and the name is going to be get dynamic ints okay so that's what's going to happen and i'm not going to ask the user how many integers so that's the tricky part about this in this one i'm not going to ask something fell over here oops yeah i don't know what it what was it but it was, it was, it was very scary i don't know something fell I have a very messy office. Things fall all the time. Anyways, so I'm not going to ask how how many. And what I'm going to do right now is the process of resizing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have an initial value for it, something to start it with. And I'm going to keep making it bigger over and over and over as you, the user, is entering it. So I don't even ask user how many integers. I'm going to come up with a, a rule for it. So, for example, this is get dynamic positive integers, okay? You have to find the rule for it. Either every single time you have to ask, continue, continue, or we're going to say, if you enter a negative value, we'll stop. So, uh, we say this is getting uh, dynamic integer values. That's what our function is going to be. And this one, I'm just going to remove. And in here, I'm going to say include... Um, I'm going to remove it and I'm going to say include dot h and I'm going to say using namespace stds int main and we're going to see how it's going to work. Okay, return zero. Okay, so first of all, so um, do we understand what it is? So we always in the in the other one i asked how many integers the user said 50 i ac occupied 50. what if the user doesn't know it's a big paper lots of stuff it cannot count it wants to enter and then end the data entry if that's the case i cannot ask the user how many things or maybe it's a file i'm reading from a file and i want to keep reading and when i hit the end of the file i stop i, I want to finish resizing how do i do that and how do i deal with it this is how i am going to deal with it uh, 140 yeah okay so do we understand what the problem is what I want to accomplish do we know do we understand it I'm looking at the uh, the chat messages anyways <laughs> okay so so now we know what's the rust so how do we do that how do we do memory resizing when the memory resizing actually happens like this so um, first of all let's uh, do some uh, uh, renaming over here so the val over here I'm gonna change it to data PTR to match the slides that we have oops val I'm gonna change it to data PTR and change it also so the val becomes that of PTR and uh, uh, the size of the uh, memory the data size that we have we're going to call it data size so uh, so CNT I'm going to call that one CNT I'm going to call it data size okay replace it so this is essentially the exact same thing. I only the only thing that I do I'll go uh, with it like this. So, um, uh, so that's the data size. 
Um, so we, we are, are we okay down to here for, for uh, first of all we uh, we know what we are doing uh, so let's uh, actually take a look at the logic for resizing and see how it's done and then we're gonna actually code it so first let's understand what we want to do and then we're gonna do it so I have data PTR and I have data size so I have series of so this data size is initial thing it's an arbit arbitrary thing I can come up with any number that I find it fit so let's say I start with 10 integers and as the user goes I'm gonna add to it so it all depends on the memory that you have and how you wanna um, orchestrate your data entry it all depends on that and you can so uh, the, what is the original data size we don't know I'm gonna put 7 over here just to show you what it's going to be then what we need to do after this after this thing if it's when when the user keeps entering and reaches to the end it stops over there as soon as it stops over there uh, as soon as it reaches over there I know I'm at the end of data because the loop just reached 7 as soon as I want to put it in the next one and I know I need to resize I create a temporary pointer of the same type and I allocate a memory with more data than data size so the chunk that I want to add to it let's call it reallocation size whatever you call it so that thing I'm gonna add to the data size and keep going like that so now I added 7 to it so I have a new array and this thing is a local variable I just I'm just temporarily using it to create another dynamic memory now that I have a new array I'm gonna get all the stuff from the old one and bring them all to the new one so I copy all the values from the old array and copy it into the new array so now my new array actually uh, uh, holds the values that I uh, that I want because I have all the values copied over here I don't need the old one anymore now I can comfortably delete the other one and as soon as I delete the other one it's all gone and that data PTR that I have is pointing to garbage to nowhere but I have the temp that is pointing to my old data plus some extra space for the new ones that I want to get so now that I have a new size I'm gonna update my data size to the new size so my data size that is 14 becomes my new size now I have the data size updated are we okay down to this point all right now that I have the new size and the new data size I have to make sure that the data pointer of mine actually points to the new memory so I can reuse it this temp thing is something temporary I'm not gonna use it forever so I'm gonna copy all the I'm gonna copy the address inside temp and put it in data PTR as soon as I do that data PTR is going to point to the newly allocated memory so my program won't know the difference it doesn't even know that it's actually resized because it is pointing to another piece of memory and my index was 7 so I can continue actually putting everything in it as I go through it so that looks fine and as soon as this process is over that temporary pointer local variable will be gone all the garbage marbage that I have will be gone and what remains for me is my data PTR and the thing that I had with new size therefore everything is ready to rock and roll I can continue my process until I hit the end again and the story continues and resizing happens over and over are we okay with this one quick thing go ahead Armando uh, and Jay I think you I don't know if you mentioned it but where does the size on temp come from is yeah, that where... it will not call memory like same question actually so uh, so you are saying where does the new size come in yeah like you, you have a, you created a temp variable but like yeah, how much you know, how, how much do you know you need you don't know people get their phds on that <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that you know like you guess like, like you just do an educated guess. You guess, ah, I don't know. I'm going to add 10. As For now, come with an arbitrary number or the number we give you. <laughs> okay? Or we All give right. the option to the person who's using our module. But the fact is, we have a specific initial amount and we want to add chunks as we are going through. Now, how 
big your memory is, what is the chunk of additional memory that is coming, what is the memory of your computer, all these things play a role. It's not something that you can just do it like that, okay? Another okay. question? Yes, Jay. Uh, so after using the temp uh, dynamically allocated memory, we oh. are not deleting it, so it will not cause memory leak. Okay, I have to explain this to, like I did for the other one. This is my temp. You see the screen? Yeah. This is the temp that I have. And this is the memory that I have that I want to ex expand. Okay? Yeah. So this is data PTR. And the, this one, the big one over here is the new size. Correct? Yes. So this is temp. This is data PTR. I'm putting this one in temp. Correct? Yes. Now I am making this one data PTR. Correct? Yeah. If you delete the temp, you're deleting this. Oh, means we are deleting data PTR. You are deleting the, the what you just copied. Yeah. You follow what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. That, if my hands are pointer and this class is memory, resizing and dynamic memory allocation is juggling the memory. I give memory from one pointer to another. Okay? The okay. other pointer is holding it. This pointer is not pointing to anything anymore. So okay. there's no deleting requ is required. When I make that a pointer point to the pointer, if I delete the temp, everything's going to be gone. What All the accomplishment that I've done with copying will be gone. And, so I think and, you Jay, did. and Jay, don't be disappointed you just thought that way. 50% of the students do that. Yeah, because I did it yesterday. <laughs> I watched the NBB section recording. <coughs> so that's, and then I tried that. Yeah, so you shouldn't do that. So the whole purpose of having that temp is to be able to juggle memory. And then that temp, because it's it's a temporary variable, it's going to get, it's going to be gone. We'll see it. Uh, Armando. Yeah, so what I was going to say is, even after you um, you give the new memory to... Uh, data PDF, 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 PDF pointer. Mm -hmm. You don't delete temp. No, because there is no memory. You already you up see the memory you deleted is data PTR. You deleted it. Okay. You copied that into the new memory, correct? Correct. And then you made data PTR point to it. Cor oops, point to it, correct? Yes. Now data PTR and temp are pointing to the same place. If you delete the temp, the data PTR's memory is gone. All right. Copy. Got it? Got it. All right. Okay. So that's that. So let's uh, let's do it. Let's actually do this. Okay. So um, now um, Forget about that out of memory thingy. So we're not going to detect any out of memory for now because I don't want to. I don't want to deal with that. For now, I just want to deal with memory allocation. Allocation. Okay. So. So as soon as I begin, I need two things over here. Two things that I want user to be able to change. Okay. So. First, I need to know what is the data chunks, so the allocation size, the one that Armando said, how do we know how much we're going to add? And I said, I have no idea. Let's add that one. So I'm going to say over here, int, I'm going to ca call that one, what do I call it? I'm going to call that one allocation size, okay? And let's say it's going to be 10, okay? So my allocation size has got to be 10, which means every single time that I'm adding, I'm adding 10 to it, okay? And initial size, what is it going to be? The initial data size, let's give it as an argument to it. So int initial memory, I'm going to give it a default argument of 10. So if they don't put anything, it's going to be 10, okay? And uh, so, uh, so, so initial memory that we have is 10 so in here I'm gonna say int data size oh come on size is set to initial memory I'm gonna remove the extra variables that we don't need later on just I'm just 
going as I, as I'm just I, I just keep going as as it's as it as it as it happens. Okay, so um, so then we're gonna say enter the values, but there is no for loop anymore in here. Okay, I I uh, I'm not gonna write a for loop in here. Um, actually, we can do it with a for loop too. Yeah, but the condition is not going to be this anymore. So I'm going to remove the condition. And because I don't know what the condition is going to be, I'm going to use my old habit, which is essentially saying Boolean done is equal to false. And I'm going to set the done. So I'm going to say over here while not done for I equals zero and not done and I plus plus keep going like this. So now and let me just take all these things away. We don't want any C out, me out. This thing is just going to get the memory and remove those things. So are we okay down to here where I have allocation size, how much I want to add each time. I know what is my data size is, whatever it is. And I know the initial memory is 10 and that's how I begin. So I start getting it in a loop and I'm going to go until I'm not, I'm, I am done. I haven't set any condition one by one. I'm going to get it as I'm going. Are we okay with this? So what's going to be the condition for me to stop, to actually read into this thing? When do I stop? Okay. And here I'm going to say, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to say, wait a minute. I should get it only if the I is not the data size, correct? If I reaches the data size, that's where I have to stop. I learned that from the segmentation fault stuff that I had over there. So I learned it from here when I said over, when I said over here, oops, I closed it. When I said over here, come on, load it. When I said over here, that as soon as I reach to the data size, segmentation fault happens. So as soon as the index reaches the data size, I have to stop and resize. Are we okay with this? All right, so let's do just that. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say if I is equal to data size, then resizing must happen. Are we okay with this? Okay, what was the procedure for resizing? When I was actually doing resizing, what was the procedure for it? Let's actually take a look at it and try to actually use it as we are going through it. So we said that we have the data size perfect. And then we said we're going to have a temporary memory and we're going to allocate memory and add some to it. So let's do it. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to create, it's an integer type. So I'm going to say integer pointer temp. And I'm going to set this one to new int. It's going to be data size plus allocation size. Whatever that is, it's going to be something more. I'm sure about that. Are we okay with this? So now I have a bigger memory in here. Now I have a bigger memory in here. The next thing I need to do is to copy everything from the old one and put it in a new one. So let's just do that. So in here, I'm going to say for integer j set to zero, j less than data size, whatever the data size is, and j plus plus. And I'm going to get everything from the data pointer and put it in a temp. So I'm going to say temp J temp J set to data PTR J. So in here, I am copying the old value, the old array into the new one. Are we okay with this? One person said no, I think. I missed it. Did somebody ask a question that I missed? Uh, I asked a question. Azusa, go ahead. Um, um, is this if statement can be um, on line 13 before C out? Sure. 
What's the difference? Show it after, before. Nobody's going to see what's happening here. <laughs> this is an invisible thing to happen. It's so fast, it doesn't matter if it's before or after. If it makes you happy, sure. There we go. I'll put it here. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference. Because nobody's okay. going to see this. Nobody's going to see what is happening in here. You follow mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess. So before, Thank it you. cannot be after seeing, I'm, I'm sure about that. <laughs> Right? Mm -hmm. What it is important to be f before seeing. Are we good? Because it's it, it cannot store anything in I. Uh, yeah, it cannot media. because it, it's invalid. We have to make it bigger before it can store it, correct? Okay. And that's you. what we are doing. All right. So. Sorry, quick question. Yes. Um, why is it uh, on the second for loop? Give me, line number. Give me line number. 15. Uh -huh. Why is it uh, data, data size and not data size plus? Because uh, that's the amount we have. This is the new size that you have. This is new size. Okay, okay, okay. You yes, only yes, want yes. to copy what you have, right? Right, right. Of course. Okay, good. Thank you. Good question. Good question. So now we have accomplished the copying. So right down to this thing in here, copying is done. Okay, so not there actually. Here, copying is done. And now that the copying is done, what I need to do is to get rid of the old data. So I don't need it anymore. I copied it. I'm going to get rid of it. So now in here, I'm going to say delete data PTR. So, so my old data is gone. The old data is gone. Okay, now that the old data is gone, what I need to do is to update the size because the size is now bigger. It's not that much anymore. Let's update the size. And how much I have, how much is added to it, to the size? Allocation size. So what I'm going to do over here is, is saying, hey, data size now is plus equal allocation size. So I added allocation size by to the data size. And that is actually doing what happens over here and makes the data size 14. Are we okay with this? All right, now that we have deleted the old memory and it's all gone and, and we don't need it anymore, let's actually see what we need to do next. Now we need to put the address inside the temp in su into data PTR so data PTR points to where temp is pointing and that's no problem for me. I can simply say data PTR is set to temp. Data PTR is set to temp, all good and gone. Now this happened. When this if statement is over, because I create this, temp has a block scope. The temp has a block scope. When if statement is over, the temp variable is gone. All that, it re that remains is my data PTR, and I can now safely read the next one. And it goes back up. And it keeps going until I reaches to next block of size. Uh, and then uh, it, it keeps happening over and over and over. And when we are all done and user, and when the user stops, when the, uh, the data entry that we actually put over here is uh, when, we, when we receive a negative number. So in here, it might be a good idea to have a temporary thing, but it doesn't matter. So in here, I'm going to say if <clears throat> data PTR I that I just received is less than zero, it means done is true. I have to stop now. It simply goes back up and stops and comes down. And uh, the data entry is gone and the data size is set. Um, and I can just say return data PTR. But there is one flaw with this thing. You know what is the flaw in here? Do you know what's wrong? What is what is the problem with this? What what I've written over here. So in here, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna say uh, integer integer pointer uh, uh, values. Okay. Now I'm gonna say uh, uh, see out uh, integer enter some integers and end uh, end 
and end them with minus one. Uh, let's put something like this, okay? And uh, I'm gonna go to new line now. I'm gonna say values is set to. Let me put the um, put the. <coughs> thing over here so the default argument is always in the prototype so I'll remove it from the definition of the function it is in the prototype okay allocation size and everything set now in here I can say get uh, dynamic int and I'm not gonna put anything in here and now what is the problem with the code in here can you tell me of course at the end I'm gonna say delete values we are lacking some information over here. My main that is using getting data, pos, pos, uh, data. did I say dynamic position int? What the devil is posint? <laughs> um, dynamic positive, or uh, dynamic int, dynamic, po I'm gonna call it dynamic int. We know it's gonna be negative. We wrote it in the description, so we're going to leave it like that. That pause thing is very, very disturbing for me. So I'm going to put it over here and make it in. So, okay, so can somebody tell me what is wrong with this? Like, like if I want to print, like if I want to print the values now, I want to print the values. How do I print the values? Can anybody tell me? What's wrong with, the function is okay, but it doesn't give me enough information back. What is the information that is lacking here? Can anybody tell me? Oh, we need the size. That Thank you. Size. We need the size. My function is not giving the size back, so I have to fix it. So I'm going to say over here, I need to know what is the size. So I'm going to pass a reference over here and return the size back to my caller program. So in here, I'm going to have an integer reference size. And at the end, as soon as the user says over here, it is less than zero that means that is my size so in here i'm going to say size is set to i so now it is actually telling me what the size is and i can stop back there okay so now i can actually have over here something like integer size and i can actually pass the size in here and receive the size back so in here i can say uh, for integer i set to zero i less than i less than size and i plus plus now i can actually say uh, see out uh, come on i plus one and do something like that over there just to show the thing so I'm gonna say values I and L and see how it's gonna work out so um, let's actually run it and see what happens so if I run the program I don't know if it's gonna run or it's gonna crash on us but we'll find out anything goes wrong we're gonna fix it what does it say uh, I think your header file is oh, wrong. my header file I forgot uh, yeah, I put it in a header file sure. This is the header. You have initial size. Hmm. What's wrong with my header? Uh, you have the def default size. Uh, so sorry, a default initial. That's ten. Oh. Yeah, and I and don't in here, think it's... Let me see what's going on here. This looks okay to me, actually. I mean, you didn't mention it in a CVP. Uh, I don't need to. Let me see what's going on. It says that is the one. I want to see what did I do because it. I th maybe I didn't. Oh, I forgot to put the namespace. I'm a bad oh. boy. <laughs> I'm a bad boy. Namespace SDDS. I'm a bad boy. See, it's a good thing I make this mistake so you can actually see what happens. So namespace SDDS. Everything has to be in namespace SDDS. I'm a bad boy. SDDS. There you go. 
save let's run it one more time run it <clears throat> there we go so enter values I'm gonna put over here uh, three uh, oh four five six seven I'm gonna keep entering values and I'm gonna say minus one hit enter it's gonna show me exactly 21 of them and these are exactly the values I got so it looks like it's working properly <clears throat> um, uh, so um, there is something wrong with it actually I'm gonna explain it and uh, uh, first of all uh, I want my main program to be able to change that allocation sizes as it goes through it so it's a good idea to make this but can anybody tell me what is the scope of allocation size in here file scope? It, it's a file scope thank you Jay and I want to make it global scope how can I do that external yes so I'm gonna go in integer DMA integer over here in here I'm gonna actually copy that one allocation size and I'm gonna put it right over here and I'm gonna call it extern so we can set it to anything else that we want so in here I'm gonna call it uh, so in here I can say actually allocation size not there inside main um, I can say allocation size set to two and I'm doing it on purpose because I want to make sure that uh, I can walk through it properly so in here I'm gonna call it two two so because now it's only two I can actually walk through it and see how things are happening and show you that although I created something that works properly but I'm wasting some memory and I'll show you why okay so let's run the program and see how it's going to work okay so let's run the program this program is running I'm gonna put it right over here so it comes in here it says enter some integers and then it goes in here uh, initial uh, data size is 2 allocation size is 2 um, my face goes over here <laughs> now let's see how, how, how we're gonna deal with it so um, <clears throat> it starts by allocating two bytes then it says enter the values it comes in here uh, the data size is 0 2 so it's not set it it actually shows the prompt and get the value for me so I'm gonna put over here 10 hit enter okay now I'm gonna come down go back up allocation size is 1 it comes down over here gets the second one I'll put 20 and I hit enter now I is 1 it comes down at the end of for loop 1 will be added to it therefore I becomes 2 now I is equal to data size resizing is required it comes in here allocates data size plus allocation size that is 4 so 4 integers gets allocated it comes in here <clears throat> sets them one by one so two of them set deletes the old one sets the allocation size to the proper one makes the data PTR point to temp so everything looks good now it wants to get the rest okay <clears throat> see in over here and in here I, I'm gonna say I am done and I hit enter what's gonna happen now it says that a PTR is less than zero says yes done is true size is two correct it comes back up but what was the memory size people what was the memory size at this moment what was the memory size when I finished data entry it is four correct it is four so the memory I allocated the number of bytes I allocated in memory is four but I only have two data in it that defies the purpose of dynamic memory allocation doesn't it like it's not that it matters I go back and everything works perfectly I'll go back in here it go it sends the data back it sends the 
uh, pointer back to values values have access to that dynamic memory it prints the two size is perfectly correct and it deletes the four values fine but I have four spaces with two memories in it so that dynamic function of mine didn't adjust it at the end to the proper size that's why it is better at the end to do a final resizing and make sure that we have exactly the size that we want so as soon as it's finished and I'm down here I'm gonna follow the exact same procedure one more time so I'm just as you see I'm just copying that routine over here again I'm gonna say integer temp and I'm gonna set it to size so that is the actual size that I want and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say go from I up to data size up to size not data size copy everything down here into that one delete do allocation make the temp set to everything and the that I don't even need to set the data size anymore because I don't use it anymore and yeah temp becomes that one and everything is done so so in here I'm doing final adjustment adjustment to set the size to the final value size it was final to the final set the size set the size to the last entry so now in here I'm saying okay now that I'm down here I know exactly how many I have I get that one I copy everything from data to temp so I'll do another temp over here uh, I copy everything I delete the old one point to the new one and return it and because the size is set back over here the other part has the size for me now if I actually run it when I come right down to here so I'm gonna run it to show you what happens so now I enter 10 20 now I'm entering minus 1 and I hit enter so it comes right down to here now it says you wanted two so I'm gonna allocate two bytes of memory for you so essentially it's shrinking the memory now it's not expanding it it's making it smaller now so it says that's the temp copy the two that you had in here now delete the four and set the data pointer to uh, the two that we have and send it out and now my value is exactly two and not more and when I'm done it's gonna delete the two and everything is done are we okay now so now this one it says uh, shrinks the memory let's put it shrinks the memory to get rid of extra memory left extra memory allocated okay half of you are not saying Armando says I hope so <laughs> people say yes I think that's beautiful it means you need lots of reviewing to do you have to go walk through this thing by yourself and remember if you use your brain here for your walkthroughs for dynamic memory allocation you're gonna screw it up I guarantee that when you have dynamic memory allocation get a piece of paper and a pen and walk through the memory on the paper with everything set make sure you do that and then you'll understand exactly how things are happening and you can optimize this code later on I like for example data PDR I could just set return temp over here that was extra but it doesn't matter uh, so check it out uh, uh, and see if it works and that was resizing the memory um, and I think it's working pretty good now any questions oh sorry any questions with yes or no any questions just a quick one yes go ahead uh, when you meant with a uh, pen and paper just each variable write Even down walk through like you're yeah. doing it for an exam for it for uh, at school before pandemic <laughs> <laughs> actually draw 
this is that this is that of PDR draw arrows Al when memory is allocated actually allocated make the size two and now like now of course when I'm using this for reality I'm gonna make this thing for example 10 and I'm gonna make the uh, initial uh, memory that I allocate for example uh, I don't know 100 I'm gonna do something like this for for the real thing um, it's going to work in perfectly with absolutely no difference. The size is going to be set and everything's going to be done. But what I'm saying is that you got to make sure that uh, when you are actually setting it, put it, put small sizes over here and walk through it and make sure everything is good. Okay? Uh, on paper, really do it uh, uh, with detail to understand how it happens. And if you don't do that, then you won't understand it. Please go through this resize thingy and see how it's done. Okay? Uh, and we're going to later on, when we understand classes and member functions and all those stuff, uh, uh, next day that you're coming in, we do all these things inside the class and everything's going to go crystal clear after that. All right. Uh, that's it. Uh, if you don't have any questions, we can uh, um, stop the session. I'm, uh, any question? Let me know. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, so if you are taking the last minus one value, so it is uh, storing that value in array data PTR I on line 26. Okay. Uh, so that's the question. So if you are taking the minus one value last, so it's, is that value stored in the array? No, it's not because I say the size is I. Okay. See, again, write it down and you will see. <clears throat> when I say, <clears throat> okay, let's put it like this. You have to draw it to see how it works, okay? If you don't draw it, you won't be able to, to do it. So these are four integers that I have, correct? Yeah. <clears throat> I enter 10, 10, 20. That's when resizing happens and then minus one, correct? Yes. What are the indexes over here? The indexes are? Zero, zero, one, one, and two, and correct? Two. Yeah. So when minus one is red, what is the index? Mm, two. And what do I put in the size? Only uh, two. Two. How many valid values I have in here? Ten and twenty. Which is? Two. Ta-da! So minus okay, so... one is not stored. Oh, yeah. Okay. The Got number it. of valid values are two and the index. Remember, index is always one less than the number of values that you have. Sorry, one more than the number of values that you have. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Got yeah. It. Okay. One less. What did I say? One less. You're confusing me, man. One less. Index is always one less than the number of that, that you're getting. So it's two. This is actually three. Okay. So you go one back. Yeah, with that drawing, I understand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Again, thank you. As I said, draw on a piece of paper. Otherwise, you will not understand it. You have to do it. And at the end, I know it's 119. I'm just gonna walk through one thing to make sure it's okay. I, I see. Like even when I'm doing it, I'm not quite sure if I've done it properly or not. So I just want to see if the initial value is 10. We are okay. So in here, I'm gonna make this 10. 10 and 2 and walk through it so i'm gonna go right down to here run it right down to here f5 so now i'm gonna have i just want to make sure i don't give you something wrong so the data size is 10 now it comes in here gets the first one and the first one i put 10 enter Continue, goes up, I get the second one, 20, hit enter, go up, and for the third one, I enter minus 1. I want to see if uh, this 10 actually shrinks to, yes, yeah, so now that's going to be that. Size is 2. Done is done. It comes up. Yeah, so everything is good. So yeah, it actually shrinks it. So now it's two. It deletes the old data. And data PTR is now two. Goes up and everything is good. Okay, now we are good. Everything's fine. All right. 
walk through please walk through and let me know if there is anything wrong have yourself a beautiful day and it's the end of the class i'm going to